Right, it's Tuesday, so it's the day after Boxing Day, and this is going to be the last of my own sets, and then we'll move back on to some repairs, starting with a Harrier CBX. So, I bought this off eBay, I, it was a few months ago, so I don't know what I paid for it. But it must be, surely must be less than 20 quid. And look how worn that is. You don't often see them that worn. And what it should say there is Barracuda. Because it's still got the label on the back, which is usually disappeared. And it says, imported by Lemon Newman Limited, Redditch, Barracuda. So it's the Barracuda GT868. Not to be confused with the excellent HP 940 Barracuda. So, missing most of its power lead, but we can sort that out. That's that's fair enough. Um, the back of this is in better condition than most. It's actually got the screws in. So it's just jolly well being used. So, you know, might, people might think how crummy these are, but they do work for a lot of people. And that includes me but then I'm in the middle of nowhere. So we'll go through it. I'll put my soldering iron on because I'm bound to have to undo the speaker. It goes without saying that Mr Chippy wasn't here Christmas Day and Boxing Day, so he'll drop in now and again and do what he needs to do, but... Uh, there won't be any on the air tests, I don't think, till um, oh, well into the first week of January. So we'll probably have to do two on the air tests a day to catch up. But we'll prioritise customers' repairs so we can send them back. Right. So I'm not going to make any adjustments because we want to see how well it's working as it's arrived from eBay. So it's got a speaker in there which says great on it. So factory original. So these tend to be very reliable. Good, well, let's get the test gear um, into uh, something like where it should be. Right, we're going to need a microphone, so I will have one which I have prepared that no doubt says great on it. Right, one microphone which says great on it. Now this being the 868 model, it actually has an extension speaker socket on the back, which is more than can be said for the 858 model. And when the audio output is only one and a half watts, you really do need an extension speaker. So we'll plug the test gear in to external speaker. We'll plug the PA speaker into the PA jack. a nasty bulge there where the glues come away from the escutcheon so I've no doubt that I can put some Bostic adhesive under there, that'll be the number two uh, impact one and then clamp it overnight right, let's get it hooked up to power so it's an unknown set I will see if I can you know how on eBay your purchase history it only goes back so many months so it may be well beyond that kind of time but I will go and check just in case because it would be nice to see what the vendor said and it would also be nice to see what I paid. Gone are the days when you could pay a pound for one of these. 
So we're at 9 volts, just make sure it powers up. We're currently limited to 300 milliamps. Um, let's just make sure the dimmer's on. Not on, I mean. Oh, we're in PA. There we go. So it has powered up, it's drawing 128 milliamps. So let's go up to 13.8 volts, current limited to 1.2 amps. Meter lamps out. We'll start off by going to PA. Now if I remember rightly, you can't control the volume of the PA on this type of set. Testing one, two. And on this set we've got no PA operation. Well, that's not a good start. Right, we'll concentrate on CB then. So it's hissing. Let's see whether we can get transmit. I'll switch picture in picture. I'll actually remember to do that today. We have got transmit. We're on the 3 watt scale. And it's doing more than 3 watts. It's actually doing 3.5 watts. Which is jolly good. Because of a 3.5 watt set. It's quite impressive when you're getting what's supposed to be maximum. So we've got TX, 3.5 watts. Let's look at deviation after two nat in because we were on 70 sems yesterday. Let's unplug the extension speaker. Right. It doesn't like lots of things, does it, this? Testing one, two. Wallow. One, two, wallow. <laughs> right, we'll keep going up the scales till I can read what it's actually doing deviation wise. <laughs> this could be the highest deviation set we've ever had. Wallow. It's 15 kilohertz deviation. Well, that's all right, isn't it? If you want to transmit on a lot of channels at once. What a wally. <laughs> Whoever's done that. <laughs> right, frequency. No wonder I was getting feedback to myself. Frequency, let's have a look at that. So we'll go over to the frequency counter. It's just dropped a little bit. That, you know, that wouldn't be a miss. Uh, anything up to 0.085 and you wouldn't start noticing it being off frequency, certainly within the legal um, allowance. So we'll bring that up to 27.79125 and it's under the um, the screening thing there. So that's okay. Oh God, I bet somebody was glad when this bloke sold up. Right. Um... Let's have a listen to receive. I'm just going to detune the frequency, the signal generator, to the same as it's transmitting on. So we get a fair reading. We'll switch the sign ad meter on and we'll put the camera on that. that's in shot enough right let's adjust the attenuator till we get 10 db 12 db i mean yeah 
this kind of set is capable of oh I might have got RF gain down of course we haven't checked it's right down it's a bit noisy as well Oh, that's fine. So as it's come, it's doing 0 0.7 microvolts for 12 dB sino. So to be honest, apart from the deviation, this set would be usable as it arrived from eBay. But the way that deviation is, um, you'd be transmitting on about five channels at once. So a bleed over box would be causing a bleed over. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take this uh, screen can off. These are always fun. It's a matter of bending the lugs back. And of course one of the sets of lugs is back there. There we go. So making sure we're on channel 20. I'm not sure where the trimming tool is at the moment. And that's what I need. The other thing I was going to do, let's just see what low power was doing. It's not adjustable on these sets, but out of interest, we'll see what low power is doing. So on the on the three watt scale, it's 110 milliwatts. Should be 400 milliwatts, but uh, there you go. This is so frustrating. I, where's that gone to? Well, I better pause the video and see if I can find it. Well, whilst I was uh, looking on eBay for this, the meter lights come on the radio, so there you go. Um, I had to go on closed auctions to find it. It was, it was beyond the time. So I only paid nine ninety nine for it as the maiden bid and £5 postage. So it was a um, vendor at um, Grimsby. So he did an awful lot of photos all the way around, more than even there. What was what two, four, six, eight showing? There was another two, there were ten in total. So, uh, and he just simply says, uh, untested. So there you go. So nine ninety nine. So that uh, that's good. Well, I think it is. Right, I managed to find the trimming tool. So we're going to transmit. And we'll run through these. That was spot on. That wasn't spot on, that's now brought it up. This could be the most powerful GT868 ever. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, I'm at 3.6. Oh! 3.8 watts! Four watts. Uh, 
there we go four watts and that's a good four watts you know it's like 4.0 something let's see what it is on channel 40 four watts channel one four watts beautifully balanced i'm not going to touch that one um that could be the one you have to do with the spectrum analyzer and i can't be bothered to get the service manual out and it's doing four watts anyway so wow god mr chip is going to be impressed now you can see why it's worn can't you <laughs> okay so the meter the preset there is for the rf meter so we know it's four watts because my test set says so According to this, it's uh, banging the end stop. So we'll just one, two, three. It's actually supposed to be in the centre of the red zone. Now we'll just see what low power is now doing. It was 110 milliwatts. And it's now 220 milliwatts. So we actually doubled it. So that's a bit more useful. Uh, let's do this deviation because this was ridiculous. I'll readjust my test set to a, a sensible uh, range because I've got it on 25 kilohertz. See where that is. Wallow, not far out. Wallow. That's it. Just over 2.4 is the peak, and the average is one to about 2.1. One two one two one two. Excellent. What's that come down from 15? So, I think I've only ever seen one GT868 or 84858 do four watts. I so say there's, there's a three and a half watt set anyway. So that's now 2.2 to 2.5 kilohertz. So we'll just do the frequency. And then I think it's a lunch break. Twenty seven seven nine one oh one. It's come up a bit because the test set's warmed up and the radio's warmed up. So I would never have adjusted it uh, permanently if it was uh, if things weren't warmed up. There we go, twenty five toggling twenty six. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's already excellent. I'll just make a start on that, but the hard ones I'll do uh, when I come back from lunch. So we'll start with the front end. We'll go with the cyanide meter. Camera's moved. So as ever, we're going to want... Oh, I need to set this back on frequency because I knocked it off frequency, remember, because the radio was off frequency. So we had a fair reading. If I can bring this sensitivity up, this could be a really, really good set. We could get rid of the Midland in the car and have a GT868, couldn't we, in the test car? Right, so we need to attenuate this so that we're about 4 dB on the sign-up meter. The idea is not to saturate the receiver. Very, very tiny difference on that one. No difference on there. Got a little difference on there. Let's go back to this one because it's all interactive. Thank you. 
the detector ones which are really difficult to do um, the method shown in the service manual uses and I've shown this I've shown it twice uh, uses a sweep generator and is quite time consuming so uh, using the cyanide meter does cut a lot of time down and this is at, a, at a, a period in time when cyanide meters or they'd been around 10 years plus they weren't kind of a popular thing in the radio workshop and I've said before I was at Nottingham Radio uh, for about 16 years uh, starting about 1986 and um, we had a Farnell test set on my bench which had a cyanide meter on it so you know, I was issued with that, and, and off off we went. And Mr. Smith, the owner, came in with a cyanide meter he'd bought uh, to c connect up onto his test bench. He says, there, I've got a cyanide meter. Anyone know how to connect it? I said, well, I've been using one for 10 years. <laughs> so I connected it up for him. So he, was, he thought he was going to be top jump, top <laughs> top dog there. Now we've gained a bit there. Now I'm just going to attenuate this again. And just double check. with signal generator higher, triple check. Signal generator lower, quadruple check. Right, let's see what that is. So 12 dB is now 0.38 of a microvolt. So it's gone from good to excellent. So for 10 dB, it's 0.28. Let's see how well we can hear it down to. I can actually hear it right down to there, and that is 0.15. If I turn the tone off, you can you'll hear it. No tone. Tone. See if we can hear it a bit longer. Yeah, I can. Yeah, down to point one two. Fantastic. Well, I'm pleased with myself on that. Anyway, we'll come back to this after lunch. Well, oh, I'm back. Well, really, we've just got the squelch and the S meter to set. So I'm putting S9 on the signal generator, uh, 100 microvolt, S9 equivalent for a CB in the UK, making sure once again the RF's at full, and as you can see it's banging the needle across, uh, which is not what we want, so I think it's the lower one of the two presets, no it's not, it's the upper one of the two presets, and that is the lowest it will go, so it's a bit um, generous because that is 30 microvolts. So 
So that leaves us with the squelch. So the squelch works with an AM detector, believe it or not. And what we'll now do is to turn the squelch to full. Oh, it's gone. And we'll now turn the test set. Let's put the uh, camera on the attenuator. I need one with a straw. That one hasn't got one. Um, we'll just turn the attenuator up to 100 microvolts, which is when it should come in. Well, I'm, goodness, it's coming. Now, that's the preset for Squelch, one I inadvertently turned. But I managed to turn it back exactly where it should have been. So 100 microvolts is coming through on the squelch, and then when we drop it down, it disappears. So now we'll test the squelch at the opposite end. I'm going to switch the signal generator to standby, and I've parked it at 0 0.3 microvolts. So when I put it back on, it will be 0 0.3 microvolts. So we'll set the squelch on the radio to threshold. So background noise has just disappeared. Switch the signal generator back on. And it's come straight in. So the squelch is coming in at 0.31 of a microvolt and it's disappearing off at 0.25 of a microvolt. So that's going to work around Scratchy Corner beautifully. Right, well, I can't see any distress components. Sometimes if sets have been over vaulted, you might find that one's been starting to pop its um, clogs no it's it's in lovely condition that resistor can play up and cause us to be on low power um, you know like one watt but we know the set's doing four I just wonder what it's doing when it's cold it's actually doing 4.2 but that will soon drop down, so I don't think the uh, the people will be coming around to my door to take me away in handcuffs for doing too much power. Right, um, we'll put this back on. I'll go and get a service hole, switch cleaner, and um, one with a straw in it, and then I'll just clean these um, the RF game controls, the only one playing up. Right, I put it back together and the internal speaker works. Uh, PH still doesn't work. I've cleaned the switch, it still doesn't work. So I'm not going to look into that, but if it was a customer set, of course we could do. Um, it could be a faulty switch. It could be all kinds of things, but um, it hasn't been messed with. It's not like it's been turned into a Roger Bleep switch or anything. So, with it in CB and now, oh, we're still on the test set. We'll switch the test set off. And we'll plug it into the roof aerial, which, as I've said loads of times, is an Antron 99 type of fiberglass end fed without the optional ground plane kit mounted nine feet from the ground level, just above gutter height of this single story building. And we'll sort this uh, power lead out, of course, as well behind the scenes. Get a fuse holder on that, clean that escutcheon. Right, we're on the aerial. It's on 19. Let's see what happens. Helps if we're on 4 watts. 1 9 a Roger. Now, notice how the meter bangs across. I'll put it on 20. Even though we know that it's been set to read 4 for the 4 watt output. And this is what I say, you might you can key up and you get one on the meter. It doesn't mean you're only doing one watt. The fact that it's banging across doesn't mean I'm doing more than four watts. It's just the way it's a relative power meter, the way it is with the matching of the area with the impedance and so on. So I keep saying this, take no notice of these meters. And on the newer sets where they're just pre-programmed to read any old thing, that's even more meaningless. One on a Roger. Ooh, the dimmer works. Wow. 
Now we know this set is super sensitive. But I'm 35 miles from the nearest city. One and a Roger. skip coming in anyway there we go we will um, do an on the air test uh, in the new year on that and um, I've no doubt that'll work very well around scratchy corner so thank you for watching the best GT868 uh, I've ever had to be honest just one of the scruffiest